Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to an easy way to design a PCB for the Ublox Neo 7M Global Navigation Satellite System Module Part 1. And this will be a two-part series. And basically what we're trying to do here is sometimes it can be a little intimidating if, if you're not an RF engineer to add one of these system on a chip type components to your design because of some of the challenges dealing with RF. In this, in this tutorial, we're gonna cut through that and make an, show you an easy way to do a PCB layout for the Neo 7M. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do and check out forstronics.com. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here's just an overview of the tutorial. I'm gonna be focusing on the Ublox Neo 7M, which is great because it's it really makes it easy to get things like your exact location, your time, your speed, and even timing pulse because they make it a very easy to use chip. You just have to read s strings coming out of SPI or serial connections and you can parse through that data with a microcontroller and get the information you need. So definitely a fan of the Ubox Blocks products. This is gonna focus on the Neo 7M. Some of what I will cover works on the Neo 6 or the Neo 8, but I think some of their pins are different. So just keep that in mind. And the whole idea, as I mentioned in the beginning is this is for people who are not RF microwave experts. And if you read their Neo 7M uh, hardware integration guide, which is where a lot of my information for this came from, you know, they, they talk about a lot of the, the factors you have to deal with with RF. And for some of those complex ones, I'm going to show you some shortcuts around those and some of the things you need to worry about and some of the things you don't. And as I mentioned before, this will be a part one in a two part series. In part one, we'll talk about the PCB layout the parts we have and why we did certain things. And then part two, we'll actually get our board, we'll build it up and we'll test it. I'm not gonna cover like programming or using the chip. I have another video called Logging GPS Data to an SD Card with Arduino. If you're interested in that side of using the Neo 7M, check out that video. Okay, just wanna provide a quick overview of the design. I'm not gonna try to exploit every single feature on the Neo 7M. So I just wanna make clear what I'm gonna do on this design and what I'm not gonna do. So first of all, I'm gonna set up two different communication interfaces, Serial and SPI, to access the NEMA data coming from the Neo 7M. And if you're not familiar with NEMA, it's just a standard for formatting GPS data. And I, I, I should also say for people that are not in the US, I'm gonna keep referring to GPS because that's, you know, that's the, the format I'm used to. Also, we're going to set up our design to work with a low-cost, off-the-shelf external active antenna. So the idea with an active antenna, it means you actually have circuitry on the antenna that helps filter and amplify your signal coming in before it feeds it to the chip. And so on our board, we need to set up a connector as well as a power source for the external active antenna. We're gonna set up access to the output timing pulses from the Neo 7M, as well as access to the interrupt pin, which I don't have listed on here. And then we'll set up a flexible input power supply, you know, four volts to 18 volts with a DC jack, or we'll have some pins you can use if you don't wanna use the DC jack. Some of the features that we're not gonna be included is we're not gonna set up the USB connection, and there's a backup slash cold start battery footprint or capability on the Neo 7M that we're not gonna mess with here. Okay, let's talk about some of the design considerations and talk about low power signals, noise, and RF signals, because basically that's what makes this difficult to integrate into a design is the fact that you have to deal with RF and low level signals. And what I mean by low level signals is you know, you have these satellites way up in the sky in space, literally, sending down this signal to Earth. And you're trying to read this signal, demodulate it, the chip is, going to demodulate it and grab the information you want. Well, by the time the signal gets to the chip, it's very low level. So we need to be careful not to attenuate the signal anymore or have the signal contaminated with a bunch of noise or else the U-Block 7 module is not going to be able to read it or not able to read it well. So what, I, what I'm showing here is they have a hardware integration manual, but I grabbed this image and it kind of shows how to set it up for an active antenna. So if you notice, here's the active antenna. You can see they have a low noise amplifier as well as a filter. So they're trying to get in this low level signal. They're trying to filter it and amplify it a bit so it's a little higher. They then show this sort of coaxial cable, then some type of connection to the PCB and that's when we feed it into the Neo 7 right here, this RF in. 
So you can think of this line as a trace on the PCB board, and this will be the connector. Now for our design, we're gonna use the U.FL connector type, or sometimes it's referred to as an IPEX connector. They're small, they're low cost, they're easy to connect. You know, a lot of times people will use things like SMA connectors as well. We're not gonna use that here, but the idea is our active antenna will connect to this connector. Now, let me mention some things. So we have our connector, our connector has to be tied to RF in. The shell of the connector to, to shield it will be tied to ground. Then we power the active antenna directly from the RF line. So that's what this connection is doing. So the NEO7 has its own VCC for RF. And the reason what makes this output special, nothing makes it too special, it's just the same VCC signal that the chip, the, the NEO7 is getting itself. But the difference is you can see that internally they do some filtering. So here's a capacitor, here's a ferrite bead, which is essentially an inductor. So they're basically creating a low pass filter. Then notice here, they have sort of this current limiting resistor, 10 ohm, but then they have another capacitor and another inductor, just like they do here. So you can see what they're trying to do is they're trying to filter that power supply signal or level as much as possible to get noise off of it because they don't want noise polluting the RF inline because it could bury the GPS signal that the chip needs to read. So that's why we have all this filtering. And as we'll see, I'll discuss later, this is a special type of capacitor called a feed-through capacitor that's used for high frequency filtering type applications. And we also have this inductor. So the capacitor is gonna shunt high frequency to ground. The inductor is gonna attenuate high frequency before you get to the RF in. Okay, I hope that makes sense. But that's why they're being real careful. And if you look in the manual, they want this trace to be straight and as short as possible. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay, here I'm bringing in another image that I got from the manual. And this is here how they're recommending that it's laid out on a PCB. I should say for this video, I'm making certain assumptions that the watcher has a basic idea of what PCB layout is and some of the pieces of PCB. So basically what they're showing here is this is supposed to be the U-Blocks Neo 7. Here's the pins. This gray color is supposed to be a ground plane or a ground shield on the PCB and all these blue dots are vias. So if we think of this as a two layer board, these vias are connecting the top and bottom ground layers together. This also could be a four layer board, in which case they would, they would have you connect the vias between the top two ground plane level layers. And why do they wanna do that? Why do they have so many vias all the way around this design and they're trying to show this ground plane all the way around this design? Well, it goes back to the noise issue that I mentioned earlier. We like to think of ground as being this ideal zero volts, but in actuality, ground can actually be a noisy place, especially if you have a lot of digital signals on your board, you have a switching power supply, things like that can create noise along the, the power supply plane. So what they're doing is they have all these vias. These are supposed to be the communication lines. This is where the, your connector is with the antenna. And they're putting all these vias in to help isolate or shield the U-Blocks module and the antenna and trace from noise sources. So if we think about this trace, it's susceptible to noise because it's exposed. And then on this module, you have the receiver, which is real susceptible to noise. So they're just trying to, once again, shield it from noise as much as possible. The other thing I need to point out is they mention here this trace, they want it to be a microstrip line. So what does that mean? Well, that relates to RF. And the whole idea is when you're dealing with, typically if you're just dealing with low frequency or DC signals on your PCB, you can just sort of use the principles of Ohm's law and make certain assumptions about things being ideal. So for instance, if, you know, for instance, if we have a DC signal or a real low frequency pulse or something on these lines, we don't think about the parasitics or the resistance of this trace. We just assume it's a short and we can do that at low frequencies. The problem though, and uh, you know, I'll be careful. I'm not an RF expert either. I just know enough about RF to be dangerous. 
you know, a lot of engineers, their whole career is just focused on sort of RF microwave. And it's a whole different world. And, and the reason is, is because when you start working with frequencies where the wavelength starts to approach the length of your trace or your circuit or a wire, Ohm's law breaks down. And so the microstrip concept is basically a way, just like a shielded coaxial cable for an antenna or a waveguide is meant to provide a signal path for an RF signal with low attenuation. And so they're, they're trying to say here, they want you to use a microstrip line, which is once again tuned to the frequency that you're using for lowest attenuation. So they want to make sure this line has as low attenuation as possible. Okay, and I'll point this out on my board and I'll talk about the microstrip a little bit more. I don't actually use a true microstrip and you can get away with not using a true microstrip if you have a really short run. You don't want this run out to the antenna connector to be long at all. With all that, let's go to the, the Eagle. I should have mentioned this before. I'm using Eagle CAD tools for the PCB layout. Let's go check out the Eagle design. Okay, here we're looking at the schematic for our, our I'll call it Neo7 reference or demo or evaluation board. Of course, you could just you know integrate this in right, right with your design. So let me start from left to right. Here is my footprint or my part for the DC jack. And once again, this is the DC jack you see on the Arduino Unos. Then I also have the, the two 2.54 millimeter input pins. So you can use either of those to, to, to apply a power source. We go to our linear regulator. I like to use a lot of capacitors to filter out noise as well as to deal with transient response when you have sharp currents. So I, I have a, two ceramic capacitors, a 100 nanofarad and a one microfarad capacitor. I should say for most components here, I'm using the high, the large size 1206 because I like to build my boards by hand and, and those are the parts that are easier to deal with. Then here is the MC33269D-3.3 linear voltage regulator. And so this is gonna take in I say from four volts to 18 volts, I think its range is actually larger than that. But this way we can apply, you know, 12 volts, 10 volts or whatever, this linear regulator is gonna turn it into three volts. Now, if you're not concerned with battery power, linear regulators are always good for designs where you have RF because they're low noise. They don't produce as much noise as a their counterpart, a DC to DC converter. And a DC to DC converter transforms voltage levels by using a pulse width modulated switching method which creates a lot of harmonics and noise where a linear regulator doesn't do that. Now, the downside of a linear regulator is it's not very efficient, so it burns off a lot of power. So if you're using a battery powered design, a DC to DC converter is typically what people go with, but they're noisier. So here's where the power source goes for the input of the Neo-7M. I add some capacitors here, all ceramic. 100 nanofarad, one microfarad, and 10 microfarads. And the idea here, once again, is these serve as low impedance path for noise on the, the power supply to go to ground. So it helps filter out that noise. And once again, if in case the Neo7 draws sharp current pulses, these serve as energy reservoirs to make sure you know, the voltage level doesn't drop. Okay, here we have the, the Neo7M. Here's some of the communication lines and basically I have the labels so they go out to this header so you can access them. And these pins are a mix of the SPI communication pins as well as the serial communication pins. And if we go to here, deselect, deselect is used to decide what communication interface you're gonna use. So if deselect is left open, floating, it'll use serial communication. If it's tied to ground, it'll use SPI. So what I did here is I put two connectors so I can put a jumper here or remove the jumper. If the jumper's off, I'm using serial. If it's on, I'm using spy. Here is my time pulse output. So if we need real accurate timing on our circuit, GPS creates very high accuracy time signals. So we can use this pulse to do timing for our circuit or other parts of our design. 
and here is the interrupt pin. And once again, these labels tie over to this pin header over here. Okay, so far so good. Let's talk about the RF section here. So notice, oh, I should mention here that this is just another requirement. I'm, I'm tying the reset pin to a, with a pull-up resistor to VCC so we don't reset it. Okay, here's the RF in run. It's connected to my U.FL or IPEX connector. And then remember, I have to apply a power source to this connector for the active antenna. So here's my VCC RF. And remember, the only thing that makes this special from this VC signal, VCC signal is they just have filtering inside the Neo 7. Here comes my output. I have my 10 ohm current limiting resistor. I have my feed through cap. And what you might notice right away is this is a little different. If you look at these caps, they're connected in parallel between your power source and ground, but a feed through cap actually has three connections, input and output, which is very low impedance to DC. And then the, the connection to ground is where the capacitor actually is. And it provides, once again, a path for low high frequency to be shunted to ground. So you just feed the signal straight through this and the capacitor is actually inside it and there's a third connection to ground. This is specially made for high frequency. Same with this inductor. Now this inductor, uh, 27 nano Henry's, I had to buy it at in the 402 size because I couldn't find it in the 1206. So this is gonna be the smallest component on the board. And then of course that feeds into the RF input. So that's the schematic of the design. Now let's look at the layout. Okay, here is my board. And here is where the Neo 7M is. Here's where my antenna connection is. And one thing I'll point out right away is we talked about noise, we wanna avoid noise. So whatever your design is, you wanna keep digital signals, communication signals, power signals, especially switch mode power supplies or DC to DC converters, you wanna keep them away from this area, right? And this is a simple design. So, I mean, I'm doing that with these communications, but for instance, if I had USB on this board, I wouldn't want my USB close to this antenna and I want my power far away from it too. So that's why you definitely wanna have this isolated. Here's my linear voltage regulator. Here's the power jack input. Here's the pin input. You know, if we remember the schematic, here's where it's coming in. Here's where my input capacitors are. Here's where the capacitors are before the power is 3.3 is fed into the Neo 7M. Here is my pin headers that I showed you for doing all your different connections. Here's deselect. There's TP for timing pulse and my interrupt, so on and so forth. Now, one thing I want you to notice, if you're familiar with boards, you'll, you'll be able to spot this. This is a two layer board and this is my ground plane. So I have a, a top ground plane and then also a bottom layer ground. So the top layer is in red and the bottom layer is in blue. So if I hit my rat's nest button, we can see the ground plane populate the board. And if I shut off the top layer, we can see that the bottom layer has a ground plane. So that's, first of all, that's, those are two of the most important thing is to have a ground plane all around your I have it all over the board, which is typically what I do, but you wanna have it all the way around your, your Neo 7. Add the top layer back in. Okay, and notice how I followed, you know, the, a lot of their recommendations where I put these vias, which tie from the top layer ground to the bottom layer ground, all the way around the chip and around things like the power supply, you know, my over here, as, as well as the antenna connector. So trying to, once again, lower the noise, shield it from outside RF. Let me zoom in a little bit to this setup right here. So here we are zoomed in a bit. This is my feed through capacitor. So here's where my RF in trace is. Here's where the VCC RF output comes and here is my bias or current limiting resistor, 10 ohms. I then feed that into feed through cap so here's the two main connections that act like a short for DC. These other two connections are my ground connections. So it basically has three connections, ground and then input and output. And so the high frequency noise is, should be shunning to ground by these pads. Then I feed it into my inductor, which is right here. 
Once again, that's a low pass filter, so it should attenuate high frequency noise, and then I feed it into my RF intrace. And notice once again, I have the shielding all the way around my connector footprint. Let's talk a little bit about the micro strip. So ideally, they would like you to have a micro strip. And if you're, if you're real sensitive about low level signals and you wanna be able to get the cleanest signal, then you probably wanna use some type of true micro strip. The reason I would call this not a true microstrip is what defines a microstrip is the different dimensions. And those dimensions you choose are tuned to the frequency you're working with and as well as creating sort of this 50 ohm uh, impedance across between your, your connector, this line, and the input of the chip. And the reason that this is not a true microstrip is because, and by the way, if you go to the website microwave 101.com they'll have a micro trip micro strip calculator so you can calculate your micro strip the problem with with this micro strip is when you use standard pcb material fr4 part of what you use for your equation is the dielectric constant of fr4 well the dielectric constant of fr4 basically yields a micro strip trace that is very large in diameter and i didn't want to put that here it would have been too big for these pads. So the microstrip requires the shield underneath, it requires the shield around the edges, and it requires this trace to be a certain size. And it's, and it's based off the frequency, the dielectric constant, the spacing between the ground planes and things like that. So what I did is I just make it the trace as big as possible to fit this pad and this pad, and it typically is not gonna give me any problems. I shouldn't say typically, it's not gonna give me any problems. Is it the most ideal signal path? No, it's not, but it'll work fine. So I think we, we made that point clear about that. Also, I mean, the last thing I'll notice is this ground plane is tied to the rest of the ground plane, but I did put it on sort of a peninsula, once again, just to help isolate this, because this is the most sensitive part of the circuit from the rest of the ground plane to help reduce noise that might be getting in here. And that's why, once again, you have the vias all the way around to help actually add to that shielding. Okay, let's uh, look at the bomb, the bill of materials for this, and then we'll wrap up. Okay, I'm not going to go over this in detail, but here is the materials or the parts that I'm using. For a lot of the caps and resistors, I didn't put exact part numbers. 1206 is the size I was using. But I did for the, the ones related to powering the... Uh, the active antenna. So, you know, for the inductor, here's the part number that I'm using for that feed through capacitor. I'm using this part number. And by the way, I got these values. I didn't make up these values. I got these values from the hardware integration guide. Here is my connector. You, f you can find these type of connectors anywhere. Here is the antenna, the active antenna. You can find these First of all, uh, U-Blocks recommend certain antennas for you. Of course, they're going to be fairly expensive. They're high quality, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm getting my antenna. Once again, we're trying to make this as basic and I'll say low cost as possible. I just buy these cheap, these, you know, you can buy them fairly cheap on Amazon or AliExpress. And I'll show a picture of one in part two. And then DC jack and then pins and pin headers. Okay, that's it for part one. If you have any questions, use the comment section below. And if you have any comments to add, please use the comment section below. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you back for part two. Thank you for watching.